Okay, chapter 26 is about resistor. Oh, yesterday we have covered the uh, capacitor, which is an other uh, fundamental electrical device. So we will have RLC. So yesterday is C, today is R, and then in chapter 30 we will have learned the L. Um, so there are some uh, fundamental concepts, some of them maybe you should already know. Uh, for example, the current, you should have known it. Uh, current density, still a simple uh, concept. And then resistance, Ohm's law probably you have learned it in high school. And then power, semiconductor and superconductor, but it's just a simple uh, introduction to, to them. Okay, so actually, uh, we talk about the electric current first. So an isolated uh, conducting loop, regardless of whether it has excess charge, it is all at the same potential, all at the same potential, uh, as long as we assume this is a uh, conductor. Uh, this conductor. Then the whole loop should, uh, should be at the same potential, even there are some charge on it. The potential at all points should be the same. Oh. Okay, so um, no electric field can exist with within it or along its surface, uh, as long as there are no, uh, as long as the V is a constant, which means uh, V is is constant which means as long as you take the gradient of V, it should be zero. So there, there should be no E field uh, we've seen all along the surface. So if we insert a battery in the loop, the conducting loop is no longer a single potential, which means that uh, the potential at this point would be higher than that point and this potential difference will make uh, the current uh, going through this loop or in the other direction there will be some electron going from the other way around. Uh, so electric field acts inside the material uh, making up the loop exerting force on uh, internal charges uh, causing them to move and thus establish a current. So there will be E field inside the loop, inside the loop, inside the conductor, and this E field will push the electron to move. Uh, yeah, so the current is in is the same in any cross section. So as long as uh, maybe you have we have a wire like this, this part is thicker, this part is uh, thinner. But as long as uh, you have a cross section, uh, the current, which means the uh, the amount of charge per unit time, should be the same. Should be the same. Uh, which means that uh, how much cur how much charge going in at the uh, same moment, there should be some uh, the same amount of charge going out. So I suppose you 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 will learn the Fourier dynamic uh, in the future. It's somehow like that, but of course not not the same. Actually, I have not learned the Fourier dynamics. Um, but for the electromagnetic sum, there are some uh, simple mathematics uh, which is related to the Fourier dynamics. Actually. Uh, So here we have the uh, definition for the current, which is actually uh, the derivative of the charge with respect to time. And uh, actually, we already know that the SI unit for Q is Coulomb. Uh, this is second. And actually, this SI unit should be A, ampere. Uh, A, A, M, P, E, R, E, uh, ampere.
Actually, we will learn Empire's Law in uh, chapter 29 and chapter 32. Uh, so here is a simple law called Kirchhoff Current Law. Uh, Kirchhoff Current Law. Uh, this is not a uh, uh, this is not the um, chemical material, the chlor uh, chloride, uh, potassium chloride, not not the potassium chloride, not not KCl, uh, not the potassium chloride. Uh, this is actually the Kirchhoff current law in the uh, circuit theory. So it says um, a conduct. Uh, I conduct her with current I0 splitting at a junction. So this is a junction. So if I0 going in this junction, so uh, into two branches, maybe there are, there can be uh, even more branches. But uh, this is just an illustration. So uh, because the charge is conserved, so which means that um, the current I0 going in this junction will equals will equal the sum of I1 and I2, which is the current going out uh, of this junction. Uh, or usually I will use it like uh, suppose I have a junction with a uh, uh, with several branch, then I will just simply use a uh, uh, all the current going in this node sum up to be zero, which means uh, I, this is I1, I2, I3, dot, 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 I n. I will usually suppose all the current will going in and then I will say sigma I k, k equals one to n equals zero. Because if you really assume uh, some of the current going in, some of the current going out, then uh, it is easier to, to make mistakes because uh, there is some uh, positive sign, negative sign, sometimes on the left, sometimes on the right. And if I just assume all the current going in, then, then it will be uh, less possible to, to uh, make uh, computational mistakes. So actually, this is so-called the uh, Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff current law. And uh, here we define the current density, but actually we do not define it in an explicit way. We define it in an implicit way. Implicit, uh, implicit way means here we define the current, uh, current density. But actually we, we do not have a equation like J equals something. Here we define J like this. The integration, the surface integration of J equals the I. Because it is not easy to write it explicitly. Ah, it's not easy to write it explicitly. J equals something else. Uh, so actually, we define the current density like this. It is somehow like the, the Gauss law, the, cur the, the electric first. Uh, at that time, phi is uh, E dot da, e dot da. So this is uh, with the same mathematics, which is called a uh, surface integral. Actually, we do not have a circle here for that time. Uh, some usually we will use it, use it like this, but here we don't have this one because we usually consider a open cross section. Maybe uh, we have a wire, then and, and then we try to cut cut here to see uh, how much charge going through this uh, cross-section or how much, cur how much current going through this cross-section. So we usually will not uh, integrate it uh, over a closed surface. Uh, so, um, yeah. so actually, the current density, as long as uh, this one is an area, so this is a meter square, and this is ampere, so the SR unit for the current density should be A over M squared. 
and uh, dA is the same as uh, is a vector perpendicular to the surface element of the uh, area uh, dA, and the integral is taken over any surface cutting across the conduct the conductor, and uh, the current density has the same direction as the velocity of the move of charge if they are positive charge, and the opposite direction if the moving charge are negative. Actually, we uh, for conductor. We already know that the moving charge should be electron, which is a negative charge. Yeah, so um, so usually is the bottom case. And actually, for semiconductor, it's not really the same. Uh, we for semiconductor we have a p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor. So for n type semiconductor, the the conducting charge is. Uh, of course, the electrons, but for, for the p-type semiconductor, the, the moving charge is called holes. It's called holes. Maybe I can just mention it later in this chapter. So uh, it's called holes rather than. So it's just like uh, uh, there's minus one electrons there, so that is like uh, there is a positive charge. So we call it. Uh, we call it holes in Chinese. Uh, it is called uh, dong. But this is for um, p-type semiconductor. P-type semiconductor. Actually, uh, we will not learn much uh, for the for the semiconductor in physics too. But for ECE student, they will learn a lot, like the applied electronics, something like that, which will. Uh, uh, learn more circuit element about the the semiconductor. Okay, so this is called a streamline. Uh, this is a streamline representing the current density in the flow of charge through a uh, constricted conductor. Uh, and uh, yeah, one one point to mention is that the current ah the current has direction. Oh, the current has direction, but it is not a vector. But it is not a vector. The current is not a vector. Although you can tell uh, the current has a direction, but it is not a vector. The charge density, uh, the current density, the current density is a vector. Uh, it's a vector, or a vector field, uh, or a vector field. So we have an inner product with the with the dA, and then take the surface integral. Okay, so far any questions? Okay, so here we talk about a yeah in in physics point of view, uh, it is quite an important equation. But actually, <laughs> I've not used because I'm not a physics guy. I'm an engineering guy. So, um, but um, yeah, I I would say they will consider this uh, formula is very very important. Uh, and uh, actually. What is mentioned here is as long as uh, assume, we assume we have an, a wire, we have a wire, and then uh, the conducting electron are actually move to the right, but the controversial current is set to move to the left. So we assume we have a current moving to the left side, and then we assume this, the length of this segment is uh, capital L. Uh, so that we can simply assume that uh, there are some positive charge moving to the left side, or equivalently, you, you should know that it should be some negative charge, which is the electron moving to the right side. But here we assume, uh, for this point, we assume the moving charge is a positive charge is okay. So we assume the moving charge is a positive charge here, and the velocity 
of the charge is VD, uh, V sub D. And uh, as long as there are some current moving to the left, which means there should be some electric field inside the conductor pointing to the left. As long as uh, the E pointing to the left, it will push the positive charge to the left side or push the negative charge to the right side. It is uh, 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 the same. So in this case, as long as we have a current moving to the left side, uh, which means that the current density is also pointing to the left side. So here we calculate the charge in this volume, in this volume. So the cross section is A, the cross section is A, the length is L. So AL is the volume, AL is the volume, N is assumed to, the, to be the density. Uh, density of the, uh, of the charge, uh, density of the charge. And then E is the uh, is the uh, elementary elementary charge amount uh, 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. So um, so this is the charge the total charge in this volume uh, the total charge in this volume. And uh, we already assume that the velocity is V D for a charge, which means that a charge takes T to move from this point to that point. Uh, it takes time T, which is uh, simply L, capital L over VD. Uh, a primary student should know. Uh, and uh, yeah, so actually we assume the value to be, uh, to be constant, uh, to be constant, which means a constant velocity. So uh, uh, I, equals uh, dq dt is simply uh, q over t. Actually, this q is is a delta q or, uh, or here that t is delta t, so we can simply write it as uh, uh, i equals q over t. So q is this stuff, and then t is this stuff. So l and l can be canceled. We now have n e. N E and then A times V D. Oh, A times V D. So also uh, we know that uh, as long as J is uniform, originally we have I equals uh, J dot D A. As long as uh, they are parallel to each other and the J is uniform, which means I equals J times A. So we have a J equals I over A, which means that we can divide A on both sides. So we have a I over A, which is J. So divide by A, so A and A can be canceled. So finally we have J equals N E times V D. So N, N is the density of the charge and E is of course a constant, 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. So the charge, uh, the, the current density is proportional to the uh, velocity of the charge, proportional. Of course, the, the direction is the same so that we can uh, write it as a vector. Okay, so um, yeah, here, yeah, condition are actually moving to the right. Uh, yeah. So the drift, so VD is called the drift velocity, uh, drift velocity of the charged particle, and it's related to the current density by uh, J equals NEVD, and then the product NE, NE is Coulomb per meter cube, uh, Coulomb per meter cube. This is the this is a uh, electron density, and then multiply by the by the charge amount. So this whole term becomes the charge density, uh, which is the charge per unit volume. So the the SI unit is uh, coulomb per meter cube. 
coolant parameter curve. So it's the carrier charge, carrier charge density. So now let's see an exam, uh, example. Uh, yeah, here we have a current density in a cylindrical wire uh, of radius capital R is uniform across uh, a cross section of the wire and J is this one, this value. And actually here shows the cross section, cross section. Uh, so what is the current through? the outer portion of the wire between the radial distance uh, R over 2 and R. So it asks the, this part, uh, this part, rather than the whole uh, wire. So actually this one is pretty easy. So we know that A prime would be pi r square, which is the whole circle minus the inner circle, which is pi r over 2 quantity square. Uh, so it is uh, pi r square multiplied by 3 over 4. 3 pi r square over 4. So um, we can just simply substitute all the values. So we have uh, 3 pi over 4 times eh? times uh, r is 2 millimeter which means 2 times 10 to minus 3 uh, quantity square uh, so it is uh, 9.42 mu m square mu m square Uh, well, maybe it's not a good. It's not good to write it like this. Maybe it's good to write it like times ten to minus six meters square because mu m square is like mu m square, which means it is like uh ten to minus twelve meters square. So it's not so good to write it like uh, mu m square. It is uh. It is ambiguous, uh, ambiguous. So it, it will be better to write it like this. Okay, so we have uh, we have a uniform uh, current density, so that uh, the the current uh, going through this part will be simply J times A prime. Uh, so it is a uh, 2 times 10 to the 5th power times 9.42 times 10 to the minus 6 power, which is uh, 1.9 ampere. Any questions? So next, uh, we consider another case. So instead, the current density is uh, is uniform. Here we have the current density is uh, varying, varies with a radial distance r as j equals a r squared. So it is not a constant over the whole cross section we need to do the uh, integration. So in which A is this value, R is in meters. So what now is the current through the same outer portion of the wire? So here we should uh, calculate I by the surface integration, J dot dA. We already know that uh, A should be uh, maybe inside or outside this page but it doesn't really matter, maybe uh, outside the page. So uh, the DA should be pointing uh, out of the page, and then uh, J also pointing out, uh, out of the page. J also pointing out of the page. 
So they should parallel to each other and point to the same direction, and which means that it should be JDA. And uh, uh, J, J is nothing but A times R square, A times R square. And actually, DA, DA for a uh, polar coordinate, uh, for a polar coordinate. So this area should be like this one, uh, this one. So, um, so this part should be R times D theta. Uh, as long as we cut it small enough, it is like a rectangle, although it is not really a rectangle, but at least we can uh, do the uh, approximation like this, as long as it's small enough. And then this side should be DR. This side should be DR. And then that side is R D theta. So this area, dA should be R D R D theta. Uh, R D R D theta. So dA is substituted by R D R D theta. So in this case, uh, we should integrate this uh, one. Yeah. Oops. So actually, it, it is a double integral, double integral. dr, we should integrate it from r over 2 to r. And then theta should be the whole circle, which means that it should be from uh, 0 to 2 pi. 0 to 2 pi. So, um, so we have a can be factor out, and then we have r cube r cube dr and then r over 2 to r and then we have uh, d theta because uh, this whole term is independent of theta which means uh, this is actually a 1 but actually we don't really need to write so it is like uh, from 0 to 2 pi so this is a times uh, r to the fourth power over four and then evaluate at r and r over two and then this one is simply theta and then and then evaluate at two pi and zero and subtract them so it is two pi so a and then this is a uh, r to the fourth power over four minus r over two quantity to the fourth power over four times two pi so it is um, 15 over 32 a capital r to the fourth power pi so we can just substitute the value 15 over 32 times a is uh, this one three times 10 to the 11th power and then r is r is actually the same is two millimeter Two millimeter, so two times ten to the minus third power, and then to the fourth power, uh, and then times pi. So it is uh, seven point one a, seven point one a. Any questions? Okay, so next we have another sample problem. So um, it asks you what is the drift velocity of the conduction electron in a copper wire uh, with radius r and it has a uniform current i. Assume that each copper 
atom contribute one uh, conduction electron to the current. That current density is uniform across the wire cross-section. So in order to uh, calculate this uh, sample problem, we need uh, some values like uh, the density of the copper, the uh, molar mass of the copper, and also the Avogadro number, huh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. <laughs> usually use in the chemistry uh, class. So here we make use of this uh, equation, this equation. So N is the atom per unit volume. N is actually the atom per unit volume, which is actually this one, which is actually this one. Uh, or no, or no, 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 this not this one, not this one. Uh, atom per unit volume, and then, uh, yeah, atom per unit volume. So, um, yeah, we want to calculate this small n, this small n, because uh, when we need to consider the drift velocity, we need to get this small n. And then e, or e is a constant, so we, we already know. So that using this equation, we can find uh, the drift velocity. So this is uh, to find small n. And small n is the atom per unit volume, so that we can uh, uh, break it into three terms. So atom per volume, somehow like the chain rule in the in the calculus uh, so it is like an atom per mole atom per mole atom per mole is uh, is this one uh, is the Avogadro number uh, Avogadro number and then the mole per unit mass for the for the copper for the mole, for the copper is this one uh, 63.54 gram per mole. Of course, you will need to uh, transfer it back to kilogram, or maybe you can just directly use it. Not, not, not directly use it because uh, yeah, you, you need to convert it back to uh, a kilogram. And then uh, we have uh, we have the mass, the mass per unit volume. The mass per unit volume, so that the mass and the mass cancel, the moles per the mole cancel. So finally, we have atoms per volume, which is the atom per unit volume. So actually, we we need to uh, substitute all the number. Uh, so N A is the Avogadro number, six point oh two times ten to the twenty third power, times. Uh, Molar, molar mass. Molar mass. It is mole per mass. Here it is mass per mole. So it should be like uh, one over this term. And then we need to convert it back to kilogram. So it is uh, 63.54 times 10 to the minus third power. And then we multiply it by the mass per unit volume, which is the actually the density of the copper density of the copper and then we need to change it to kilogram and change this to meter cube so finally uh, change it to meter cube so it will have a 10 to the 6 power 10 to the 6 power and then change it to kilogram it will be 10 to the minus third power so after canceling it will become 8.96 times 10 to the third power. So we have n to be 8.49 times 10 to 28 uh, meter uh, inverse uh, meter cube, inverse meter cube. So which means within one meter cube there will be 
so many uh, atoms. Uh, there is so many atoms, 10 to the 28th power, almost 29th power. Okay, so we can make use of uh, VD, uh, VD equals J over NE to find the drift velocity. And actually, we have I, I to be uh, to be seven mdm, or we can we can write it as a uh, I over N E A, I over N E A. J is I over A. So I is uh, seventeen times ten to the minus third power. N is uh, eight point nine four times ten to the twenty eighth power. E is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 and then A A is this uh, one which is uh, pi r square so pi r is uh, 900 times 10 to minus 6 quantity square so it should be 4.9 times 10 to the minus 7th meter per second which means it is really really low uh, really really low uh, it is for the drift velocity for the drift velocity really really low although this number may not be really correct may not be really correct it is just an approximation because we assume here uh, all the all the charge all the char all the carrier charge is moving uniformly, but definitely not the not the cor correct assumption because it may collide something and then it will going going like uh, collide something and then going like this way. So probably the VD should be higher than this way, but on average. On average, uh, we consider uh, it is moving like this for a longer amount of time. <coughs> <coughs> However, VD is really, really low, 4 times, 4.9 times 10 to minus 7, which means uh, less than 1 micrometer per second. So you can imagine. Um, the switch, no, switch. Yes, you can imagine the switch. But actually, you, you don't feel the charge is moving this slow because you can imagine the switch, the switch uh, for that light is here, and then the length should be at least from here to there to, to there. So it is quite a long distance. Which means that it doesn't really mean that uh, when I when I press this button, then the current going from here to there, it is actually pu pushing, stacking all the charge. It moves uh, a little bit, but actually pushing some current uh, before and, and go move forward. So actually, it doesn't really mean that. Uh, it doesn't really mean that. Uh, suppose. Uh, Suppose this is the this is the light, this is the light, uh, this is the switch. It doesn't really mean that when I press this button, the uh, the current directly go from here to there. Actually, there are some current uh, moving a little bit, and then pushing the the electron in front also moving a little bit. So actually, the current here of going going to the to the light. So it doesn't really need uh, the, the electron to move really, really fast. And actually, it's, it possibly move really slow. Actually, slower than a snail. <coughs> OK, so, uh, so far, any questions? OK, so. Here we talk about the resistance and resistivity. Resistance and resistivity. So in the previous chapter, we know that 
uh, given a specific uh, structure, then we can calculate uh, the amount called the capacitance, which means that uh, given uh, the area or the, or, the, or the distance between the two conducting plates, we will know that uh, there is a constant C, which is, uh, which is the ratio between the, the charge stored at the conducting plates and the uh, and the uh, and the electric potential. Here, uh, we have an other constant which is called the resistance. Uh, which means that suppose we have a wire, if we know or or any material, uh, or conducting wire or or any material, as long as we know the cross section, for example, cross section and also the the length, then we can determine a ratio, like. Uh, we will know uh, the potential difference V between uh, this point and that point and then the current going through it. So it will satisfy the ratio is uh, V over I should be a constant. And this constant is called the resistance. Ah, then zu ah, then zu. <coughs> So this is called resistance, which is uh, V over I. And the SI unit is ohm. SI unit is ohm. Of course, the SI unit for V is V. The SI unit for I is A. And the SI unit for R is ohm. Uh, the SI unit for C is farad. <laughs> So here, uh, V is the potential difference across the conductor, and I is the current going through the conductor. So the ratio should be a constant, which is called the resistance. So the resistance depends on the geometric shape of the resistor. Uh, resistor is the is is this one, uh, and then the, this. The resistance is the value, is this value, is this value. This is called resistor. And the uh, resistance is the value of this resistor. Uh. So instead of the resistance R of an object, we may deal with the resistivity. Uh, resistivity, rho. Uh, resistivity. So the resistivity only depends on the material itself. Maybe it's a copper, we have a resist resistivity like this. And maybe it's a silver, then the resistivity may be lower. And if it is gold, the resistivity may be even lower. Uh, the resistivity only depends on the material itself and not the geometric shape. So here, we have an other equation like this, which is written as uh, E times rho j. Uh, sometimes we will call this one the uh, microscopic wheel, uh, microscopic uh, wheel, uh, microscopic uh, other other uh, field form of the. Ohm's law, uh, Ohm's law. <laughs> so it's an, another form of the Ohm's law. Previously, we, we already know that uh, V equals I R is the certain point of view's Ohm's law. Here, E equals rho J. Uh, this is vector, this is vector. And actually, this is equivalent to V equals I R. Here, V and I R are scalar. Uh, v and I are scalar. So in circuit theory, uh, when you mm, talk about it in the circuit theory, maybe we'll discuss a bit in uh, chapter 27, chapter 31, then usually we'll use a V and I because uh, these are vectors. Calculate them will be much more complicated. And uh, yeah, so anyway, we have the equation like uh, E equals rho j. So we co related 
the we related the the e the e field and the and the current density and the current density because here we already know that e uh, at, at least at this page we already know that uh, vd and j should have some relationship so for that equation we also uh, related e and j e and j and there is a uh, reciprocal reciprocal of the resistivity called the conductivity uh, in chinese it's called uh, dao dian lu Uh, of the material, so it is just a res reciprocal, reciprocal, uh, reciprocal uh, of the resistivity, resistivity. So, uh, so actually, we assume, we assume we have a cylindrical, um, we have a cylindrical wire, we have a cylindrical wire. The length is capital L, and the cross section area is A. So that uh, the resist the resistance of this wire will be rho rho, which is the resistivity, multiplied by the length and then divide by the the cross section area. Which means that if the cross section area is is larger, then the resistance will be lower, and if this is longer then the resistance will also be, be larger. It's somehow like uh, the corridor. If it is wider, then you can move uh, easily as long as there are many people, uh, as long as there are the same amount of people. If the, if the corridor is wider, then you will, you will be uh, easier to, to get past all the, all the people on the, on the corridor. And if the corridor is longer, then you also need uh, more effort to go through the whole corridor, the, uh, the corridor. And actually, uh, yeah, so this is, so this is uh, how to evaluate the, the, the resistance of a resistor. And actually, this row, the resistivity also depends on the also depends on the temperature also depends on the temperature so it is roughly like a linear relationship roughly like a, a linear relationship so in this in this figure it shows uh, x-axis is the temperature absolute temperature in Kelvin and uh, yeah so this is the room temperature around the uh, 300, uh, 300 Kelvin is, is the room temperature. So, um, so they try to measure the resistivity with different temperature and they, it is approximately a straight line, although you can see it is actually bending upward. But they will try to um, extend it to uh, close to zero Kelvin, zero Kelvin, which is somehow like minus 270 degree, 273 degree. Uh, uh, yeah, so actually, as long as they doing this, they would find the superconductor effect. They, they find the superconductor effect because it is, uh, there will be a strange phenomenon uh, near the zero Kelvin, maybe roughly like uh, four Kelvin for a material. Like uh, uh, I'm not really, I, I can't really remember what which uh, material, but actually, they do it by um, cooling the material, and then suddenly the resistivity goes to perfectly zero using the liquid helium uh, 
so that the liquid helium can be go uh, to like uh, four kelvin, four kelvin, and if you try to manipulate the the pressure, then then you may get an even lower lower temperature. Okay, so let's take a ten minutes break.